anyone ever stop to figure out just how many fish there are in the sea? Well, there are more than have ever been caught anyway. Remember this for a starter. We and our neighbors and the other poor fish eat 20 billion pounds a year, one and a half billion dollars worth. And only a few kinds of fish are good eating. We're talking about sea fish, not the trout and the perch and the catfish. It's sure we don't eat all the fish in the sea because fish eat fish. As the old poem says, great fish on little fishes feed and these in turn on those of lesser bulk. Now take these porpoise, the comedians of the ocean wave. No good for food. They make good leather and the finest lubricating oil used for watches and clocks. These clowns will tag along with a boat for hundreds of miles. This is a grand trip. Down the Mexican coast, where the gamey fishes play. Yes, sir, this surely is a fine cruise. Although we haven't come into the game fish waters yet. I don't suppose any one man could ever learn all about every kind of fish. There are over 20,000 known and classified different kinds. Each one with its own double-jointed jawbreaker of a name. The cook, he doesn't care what the name is, so long as the fish is palatable. It's pretty soft for Cookie, with his own private market right at the back door. And the seagulls, too. Ah, they say, easy pickings for breakfast. Now, hi, yells the lookout. He sighted a tuna boat. Now see how part of that 20 billion pounds gets into the can. This commercial slaughter of the innocents is pretty brutal work. The men throw out the chum, the fish swarm about the delectable morsels, but there's nothing chummy about the way they're caught. Bear hooks on stout lines, catch as catch can, heave them in board. What an indignity, throwing these beauties around like so much cordwood. But now, this is where the sportsman gets into action. Catching the tuna with rod and reel is sport. This originated at Santa Catalina. The Avalon Tuna Club regulates the length of the line and the weight of the rod to give the fish some sort of a break. From Avalon, it spread to Florida, New Zealand, Europe. No doubt about the tuna being a game fish. Anytime you get a 10-footer weighing up to 1,500 pounds on that line, you know you've got a fight on your hands. There he is, barely hooked. Now, all you've got to do is land him. Whoa, is he a fighter? I'll never give him any slack. Play him, tire him out, that's the trick of it. The song of the reel is music to the sportsman. What a game guy that fish is. Often they'll fight for hours. Once a man, an American at that, off the English coast, fought a tuna for more than 24 hours. Wrists and forearms get the strain. Oh, yes, it takes power, a quick eye. Look, what's the matter with the lookout? See that menacing fin? Shark after the hooked tuna. The shark couldn't catch him if he wasn't handicapped that way. Shark, tiger of the sea. Of all sea terrors, the shark is the meanest, the most crafty, merciless, tremendous strength with an uncanny sense of smell. They'd rather steal like this than hunt their own prey. One 40-foot shark was killed and a 100-pound sea lion found in his stomach. Some swallower. A fossil shark has been found, held over from prehistoric times, 90 feet in length. Well, now this is developed into a three-cornered battle. Man against tuna, tuna against shark. What a battle it is. The terrific power of those mighty tails flailing the water. The tuna, the largest of the mackerel family, the shark, well, uh, let's just call him by his true name. That sounds like mule skinner language. Fluorotrimi selachians. That's just what you are, you robber. Fluorotrimi selachians. You've got all the best of it, for the tuna can't attend to business. To bring the tuna to gap is, uh, is no chore for a landlubber. But these deep sea fishermen are superhuman. 
Almost anybody can hold a pole, but it takes a body of steel and rawhide to do the dirty work like this. Good man, he's got him aboard. Goodness sakes alive, that shark made a pretty fair start at his lunch before he was interrupted. He must be taught a lesson, that shark, a lesson that'll last him the rest of his life. Here, take a smell of this nice pork. He took it all right, hook, line, and sinker, if any. You know that's all hooey about the shark having to turn over on his back to bite. He does sometimes if his victim is up on the surface. No, Mr. Shark, they don't waste any good line and reel on you. Just a half-inch rope and a heavy bar. They know your habit of spinning and fouling a line when you're hooked. You're no good sport who gives a fisherman a run for his money. The only thing you're good for is shark skin and glue, and maybe your liver will try out some pretty fair oil, and the China boy may make himself some shark fin soup. Ooh, what an ugly brute. Those teeth are just about the most terrible crunchers in creation. Three sets, one inside the other, could rip the sight of a rhinoceros open. You might as well give up and play dead, Mr. Shark. No? Well, uh, maybe he doesn't fancy a boat trip. He might get seasick. Isn't that a sweet little playmate for a bathing party? Welcome aboard the lugger. How do you like him, Cookie? No, sir, if that's a fish, I'll never eat another sardine. Well, the expedition is underway again. Daily wondering just what the next hour will bring forth is what gives spice to life. You know this sitting on the string piece of the village dock and dangling an angleworm on the end of a line with a cork on it may be all very well in its way, but it don't weigh enough or the fish don't. Now here is something that does weigh enough, weighs plenty. This commercial fishing boat has caught a manta, not a very big one, only about a ton, but they eat their weight in fish each day. They're too greedy, spoils fishing for the boats. Say, there's an idea. That must be good sport, catching one of those terrors of the deep. For real sport, you know, there must always be that element of danger, of fight to send the old blood tingling up the spine. All life is a battle ever since the cavemen fought for every mouthful of their food. So, the only thing to do is to give the giant a go after him in a small boat which the manta could swamp with one flip of his great pectoral fin. The manta, or giant ray, is one of the wonders of nature. It's almost impossible to believe that such a vast creature grows from a small egg, but it does. The egg has little tendrils hanging from it, and the mother scratches the egg off against a rock on the seafloor, where it grows to man's size, and then some. It's quite a problem for the harpooner to pick a spot where his barb will catch hold. It's like shooting an arrow into a feather pillow. But this boy knows, zam, right through the skull. That's the spot, all right. The giant ray has a soft skull, all cartilage. Now, oh, what a ride they're getting. 40 miles an hour. Those giant flippers going in a fiendish crawl stroke. Faster than a torpedo boat. A torpedo boat, huh? He's a destroyer. This chap is called a devil fish for good reason. Fish from hell, yes, sir. See them go. Ooh, say, one of those gigantic pectoral scuffs. The boat, the boat's upside down. That's where the element of danger comes in. If the great fins fold over on the boys, they're done for. Swim for it, fellow. Make for the ship. And it's goodbye to the ship's boat. It's on its way to Japan. Come on, man of life, put some kick into it. Oh, hey, hey, this is over the odds. Sharks again. And if there's anything in the sea that attracts a shark, it's a man swimming. He's just got the kick to swim, and every kick is another invitation to those awful jaws to crunch a leg off. Well, thank goodness one of the boys is safe. Congratulations, old boy. It's better than doing a Jonah in the manta's interior. 
And while they're bringing the other chap aboard, the lookout shouts that the Manta's making off with her boat. It's worth salvaging. And maybe the boys would like another chance to express their opinion of that devil fish. Elasmo Brank, that's what you are. But there's a storm brewing. If that boat is to be recovered, they'd better make all speed. For when one of these tropical storms break, there's no time to think about mantas or dinghies. But for the sake of the nice little self-respecting fish, they'd like to wipe out this fish breather. Those great fins just fold over like a scoop. And a big fellow like this, 20 feet across and more than a ton weight, some of them even 5,000 pounds, eats his own weight in fish each day. Baby is like a suction dredge or a steam shovel. All right, haul in the slack, boys. Drag him in. But what they'll do with him aboard our trim little craft is beyond me. Heave hard, boys. Don't let him go now. Oh, now, isn't that a tough break? Here, this boy has gone and got his foot caught in the bite of the rope. Help, help, help! Yes, but in freeing him, the line goes for the board. Well, that settled it. We can't lose both the boat and the manta. With this storm creeping up so fast, we uh, better take an extra hitch there, boy. Make fast there, sailor. Stand by to cut the brute loose if the skipper gives the word. Boy, they'll be lucky to ride out this storm. storm can last forever, but see what it did to our gallant old boat, high and dry on a little barren island. Weeks of work for all hands has salvaged about everything, washed up on the sandy beach. Next high tide will float us offshore. <laughs>